and then he could leave and go to the next woman because all he was was a procreator of seed. He wasn't a father and he really wasn't a husband because your child could be sold or your wife could be sold at any time to someone else. And Massa did a lot of things too. So when we're looking at what we're talking about fatherhood, the name of our uh, message today is building a legacy of fatherhood. Because when you think of fatherhood itself, fatherhood is something that has to be built. But there's a greater dimension even of fatherhood. So today is Father's Day, and it's a day when we honor fathers and our grandfathers and our great-grandfathers. In Scripture, we are commanded of the Lord to honor our fathers and mothers that our days may be long. Amen. You absolutely have to understand when people, young people are dishonoring their mothers and fathers, they are dishonoring what we call a commandment of God, which means that their days won't be long. So you see a lot of folk, young folk even dying today, and it's because they're going against the instructions of mother and father and doing things that they should. Mom and dad said, I don't want you hanging with this person. And man, if you're like me, you always want to hang with the person that they tell you not to hang with. And you end up getting in trouble because why? Because you shouldn't have been hanging with that person in the first place. You've got to know that most of the trouble I got in was because I was with the person that I shouldn't have been with at the time. And so if you look in the prisons, a lot of them got in trouble because why? They were just with the wrong person at the wrong time. See, you with a partner. Now, women fight just about as much as men do these days. But you with the wrong partner, and you know they'll hell you. You know all they do is start fights wherever they go, and you hang with them. Yeah, I got your back, ride or die. Well, you better make sure you're ready to die these days. You know about playing. So when mom and dad tell you not to hang around folk, you need to not hang around. That was for free. I, that wasn't even in my notes. Now, okay? right. 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 So this morning, I want to use the word father in the form of an acrostic or an acronym. Mm. The title of the message is really Building a Legacy of Fatherhood, but I really want to let you know how to spell the word father, okay? Uh, the first letter in Father is faith. And it's not just faith, it's a saving faith. Because people say they have faith, but they have belief right now. You know, you'll, you'll ask people questions, and they'll say, listen here, uh, I'm with you all the way. And somebody pull out a gun. Uh, I don't no. even know them. What, what, I, who are they? You know, they, they, they done left you. Yeah. You know, when we're talking about real faith, look at the students at Columbine. Mm -hmm. The wow. people put guns to their head and said, if you don't deny Jesus, I'm going to blow your head off. My, my, my. They wouldn't deny Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Wow. Some of with the, who is Jesus? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> who, who that man? Who, who that man is, you know? But we're talking about real faith and faith in Jesus Christ or whatever. So, Dads, let me begin by saying you cannot be the best father possible unless you have what we call a saving faith. Regardless of how much you love your children and regardless of what you do to care for them, if you have never trusted God, uh, you would fall short, woefully short of God's expectation for you as a father. The reason? Your children needs a father who knows the father. And if you ever expect your kids to know him, you must first possess a saving faith in Christ. Mm. We, we say we love God. We say he's the Lord of our lives. But most of us just mean he's the Savior. I've got saving faith enough to go to heaven. But I don't want the sanctifying case of faith, which means that I've got to go through process. Mm -hmm. None of us likes process for real. But, but God lets us know that we've got to go through process. Amen? If it wasn't for process, you wouldn't have hamburger. 
You All right now. Amen. Because before you eat that cow, he has to go through the processing plant. Yes, and it has to come out hamburger that you can eat. That's it. Well, even when it comes to process in your own life, before you are palatable to the people around you for salvation, you have to go through process. Because you meet so many people you don't like. Now, some of y'all do it disproportionately. You don't like 75% of the people you, know, you meet. But the thing is that, you know, it, it should be a little number of people you just don't like. And you shouldn't just don't like them because they don't treat you right. If you're a child of God. And fathers are held to a higher accountability than anyone else on the earth. Uh, let me let me tell you about the privilege of first. The privilege of first, God writes in his word that he created man in his own image. And people will point out that he said male and female created he them. He did. In conception, he created them both at the same time. But in really the forming and really the manifestation, he created the man first. Because really what he did is he took man, out, a woman, out of the side of the man's rib. Now you notice he didn't take her from the back, okay? All right now. All right. Because she's not behind him. She's Bring beside him. That's okay? right. word said he, he was making him a help meet somebody to help meet what 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 is what is she up and meet it didn't say m-e-a-t meet that g it said meet which meet what are you meeting well if we we'll look at ephesians this is not in my notes either if you look at ephesians 5 it tells us that uh the woman is to submit to her the wife is submit to her husband now it doesn't say that the woman is submit to man the wife is submit to her husband. That's right. So what does this submit mean? Because it's the thing that makes women have stand up. That's Come right. on now. Make them get mad. To let them turn red if they bright. Watch yourself now. <laughs> the stuff that can make them ready to fight. <laughs> and if you're a man and you have to use the word submit, you ain't really the, 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 the king of your household. <laughs> you, you ain't really the king of you have to use the word. You, 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 you ain't on level ground right there. <laughs> but what is the help me needed? The word submit really means that she's under the mission of a man. She, she's helping with the mission that he has. The problem with our men sometimes is we don't have a mission. Amen. So Amen. How can she submit that's true. to Amen. a mission that's not there? Wow. And that's when she begins to take over. <laughs> and begin to say, well, you ain't got no mission. I got one. Come on. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm breaking in the bacon, fried in the pan. All right. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
figures that you figure that out, she'll refigure the equation. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, Some of y'all ain't even, uh, you know, y'all trying to just hold yourself together, but that's okay. I want the man to know. Yeah, you never know. So just don't be upset if you know. But you like ice cream last year. Vanilla, what happened? Come on, stop. You don't like it? Glory, hallelujah. They don't like it because you figured it out. Okay, you don't stay on too long. Okay, let's, let's keep going. Somebody say keep going. Keep going. So a saving faith is also a living faith. Thank you, Lord. Praise God, Dad. If you have a saving faith, that's great. But let me ask you a question. Are you living for God? Does your faith stand as an emblem? a sign of security for your children. Mm. Do your kids see you pray on a daily basis? I didn't say a weekly basis, a monthly basis. And for those who never see their, their, their father pray, I'm not saying that. But have they seen you pray on a consistent basis? And will they remember how you live by faith? Wow. And you're saying live by faith. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I'm saying live in my faith when things are not quite the way they were supposed to be. Mm. You're, you're living by faith. And you've got a calm when every kind of hell is breaking loose around you. Wow. Do you have a calm? And I said this is building a legacy of faith because no man gets there overnight. Amen? Amen. So you have to build on it. I might, I might add it will make all the difference whether or not they learn to live by faith because your children need to learn to live by faith right now. Amen. Adversity. Uh, adversity uh, is counterintuitive to our faith. Is those the papers I had on it? Let me get those. Yeah. Count, uh, adversity is counterintuitive. Uh Let's look at the, when counterintuitive, if I'm saved, it looked like everything ought to go good with me. It looked like I ought to be blessed all the time. It looked like when I tell the devil to flee, he ought to run faster than he could ever think. Because the word says, you know, if I, you know, really flee, I, I, this is something about flee them, he will flee from me, okay? So, when we look at that, we need to know that it, the adversity will hit you as a Christian, but it's all a part of process. Somebody said process. 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 Sometimes it will seem like everything is going wrong, but I want you to know that sooner or later it's going to be right because how many things work together for the good? All things. How many things? All so things. Many, how many things? All so things. So I want each one of you to know all that stuff you're going through. It's going to work together for you good. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, some of you during this pandemic, toward the end, you've been seeing some God do some, and in the pandemic, you've been seeing God do some miraculous stuff. Amen. I mean, you've seen him do it, and you're just saying, yes. God, yes. how could you do that? I, I've been praying for that, wondering about it, and God has done it. And, and as a matter of fact, when, when, when it says that the divorce rate is up right now because of the pandemic and people being in the house all the time with each other. <laughs> got close. But now it meant that God showed you some stuff that was really happening on the inside yeah. of each other and you had to deal with it, but somehow you got closer no, when the whole world, even Christendom, is getting further apart, you got closer, God is saying, I'm doing this thing. Yes. Yes. You think I'll release or, or allow a pandemic to occur that would affect you in a negative way if you're serving me? Mm. No, sir. I allow things in order for you to get greater in me, to know me even more. Amen? Amen. So the proper approach to adversity. What should our approach be when adversity comes our way? How should we handle it? When the storms of life beat up upon us and we struggle for answer, what should we do? We should go to God in prayer. Yeah. Psalms 86 and 7 says, In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee. For thou will answer me. He will answer. 
may not be the answer you want, but he will answer. Amen. 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 We should attend God's house in Psalm 5 and 7. David says, but as for me, I will come into that house in the multitude of thy mercy and in the fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Man, we were praising God today. I love that in praise and worship. Amen. We were praising God today. I mean, I saw you up. I saw you right now giving God the glory. That's what God deserved. But you know what? Uh, before this, uh, in, before the pandemic, you were coming in sometimes and acting as cool as the other side of the pillow. Yeah, I get up when I can, when I want to, when I have a chance. And the praise team was up here trying to pull you. Oh, we got to get them going. We gotta get them going. We got, and they never win. And you never win. But God turned it around. He turned it around. Somebody get down. When I see our young men, 12 and 13, up praising God, and everyone that's praising God, it does something for us or whatever. Let's look at the correct example of adversity. Fathers should know how to handle adversity. Our children are watching us. They will always remember how dad took the family through the trials of life. Did he cuss and fuss? Mm -hmm. Now, in the world now, All I right used to now. cuss every three words, man. <laughs> I have a reputation for cussing. Mm -hmm. I could cuss so much and so bad that whoever I was cussing at would be confused and couldn't tell. <laughs> The cussing stopped. Thank you. Praise God. And, and it stopped because I was a man of God. I don't think my children ever heard me cuss. Now, they heard me fuss, but I don't think they ever heard me cuss. And all the time they were at home. Amen. And another thing that I learned right now is children react to the father's voice a lot differently than the mother. Amen. When my wife and I used to have discussions, Legitimate discussions. I'm talking about real discussions. Uh, I'm talking about them kind of discussions that you voice get loud. Yeah. I noticed something about my children. As long as my wife's voice was raised, they were just working and smooth and everything. But as soon as I rose my voice, they almost stopped breathing. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I don't want that to Amen. happen to my children. Amen. And Amen. along the way, when they meet it, I won't lie. I'm not a meeting, but along the way, I learned to stop <laughs> fussing. So I didn't fuss it out loud as far as my children was concerned. Because I realized it affected them in a negative way. There's a voice you have as a man. There's an authority you have as a man that you can calm anything with your authority and we need to learn to walk in that yeah. and then it's did he whine or shy because as a father you can whine all the time and then you get what nobody don't want to listen to you. Oh. nobody want to hear what you got to say oh. because you're always whining and not shy hmm. instead of saying we're going to do it you just right whining about how if you cut off the lights more it'll happen if you not eat all the food, it would be better. Uh, all this stuff. But God wants it so that we are really walking in authority. Amen. We want to be men of authority. So one thing is certain, and that's we will all leave behind a legacy. The one most remembered will be the, the one that comes from our children. God helps us to set the right example now so that when we are gone, our children will know exactly how to face adversity in their lives. There was something that I had to do as far as when my children start growing. I was a total totalitarian. I said it, I meant it, that was it. No discussion. But as they got older and they began to go to college, I had to learn something. I had to learn to be a coach. One of the hardest things about a coach is that all you can do is give instruction mm -hmm. and then the other person has to be the one that take the instruction and follow them because you're not all around all the time around as a coach. 
Amen. So we have to know how to transition from being a totalitarian to a coach right now. And so in the Bible, God commanded the fathers to teach their children and to set an example. So that according to Psalm 787, they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. The next letter in Father is teacher. Did you know that God never intended for public schools to educate or to be the sole source of educating our children? He meant fathers to be a great part of that teaching where we are praying with our children, where we are leading devotions with our children, where we're doing the things that will help our children to be strengthened. So when our fathers are accountable, fathers are ultimately accountable for teaching of their children. They are, uh, there are a variety, variety of teaching models today. And even when it comes to public school, even when it comes to private school, even when it comes to Sunday school or the pastor teaching out here, I've got to let you know that the real thing is that what's going to last in their mind as a legacy when you as a father take time to sit and really teach them about the word of God. Uh, I had an, uh, with my children, I was uh, teaching Bible study one time and uh, my youngest son, I'm not going to name his name, but you don't know who he is, but anyway, he asked the question in the middle of the of the Bible study, what is sex? <laughs> now you thought I as a parent would have just said, oh boy, we can't deal with this. We boy, I don't know. No. Know. Explain sex to all of them. They were turning all kind of colors, all uneasy and everything else. But I didn't care. He asked the question that deserved the answer. And I gave him a biblical answer as far as sex is concerned. Fathers ought to be able to step up and explain those things, even when it comes to the word of God. The next thing, fathers are available. Uh, in order for a dad to teach his child, he must be available. Yes, we understand that fathers have to work. Make sure certain there is time for prayer and devotion at home. I asked my sons, I was asking them two important questions last night. I called them to ask the ones that I could get a hold of uh, about that. And when I look at this, fathers are available, I had one to say, uh, the question is, what's the most important part of fatherhood? Because they're all fathers. So many times. But anyway, most important part of fatherhood. So... One of my sons says, being there, no matter what they are facing, letting them know that they are not alone, you can count on me. And then the last part question I asked them was, what is the most challenging part of fatherhood? And he said, being able to do everything they want to do, refer to money. You know, when I look at that and being available, there are children all out there that don't have fathers that are available. And as they grow up and fathers, you don't have to be married to the person. If you've got a child out there, you need to try to be as available as possible. Amen. Amen. You, you need to be as available. I'm not telling you make a baby outside of marriage. That's but if you right. got it outside of marriage, you're responsible for it. And not only are you responsible for that child, you're responsible for taking care of them also. Amen? Amen. Yeah, yeah, don't blame it on the system. Amen? Amen. Okay, because the system didn't make the baby. That's you did. Right. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. So, so, so now you may think I'm, I'm, I'm being precise like this, but I had a child I, 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 before, before I was that, a mother that I wasn't married to. And so the thing is, I still did what I was supposed to do. And that's what we've got to do. Okay? Amen. So I'm not kidding. Man. The day is not to, you know, just bash men. Amen. The day is to build a legacy of fatherhood because yeah. that's what we want in the end. Amen. Uh, the father is also a helper, the H in father. A good father is a helper. He is a helper to his wife. He is a helper to his children. 
By the way, that Ness, if your wife works all day outside the house, help him bring in the bacon, which is really the man's responsibility. Believe it or not, it won't kill you to help around the house a little bit. Amen. 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 A weary wife wants to define the husband as someone who takes out the trash and gives the impression he just cleaned the whole house. <laughs> 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 so when we talk about humor, someone defines the difference between the way a man and a woman thinks about getting the job done. A man is a person who, if the woman says, never mind, I'll do it myself, he lets her. <laughs> a woman is a person who, if she says to a man, never mind, I'll do it myself, and he lets her, she gets mad. Amen. A man is a person who, if a woman says to him, never mind, I'll do it myself, and he lets her, and she gets mad, says, now what are you mad about? <laughs> a woman is a person. <laughs> a woman is a person who, if she gets to, says to a man, never mind, I'll do it myself. And he lets her, and she gets mad. And he says, now what are you mad about? Says, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. Amen. 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 A man is also a helper to his children right now. Yes. A, a father helps with the homework, he helps with the school projects, he yep. attends the Little League and soccer, soccer game, he takes time to be involved, he's always there with an arm to lean on. So, Ken, Ken Canfield in his book, The Seven Secrets of Effective Fathers said, effective fathers are committed to their children. They know their children. I was surprised, I was talking to my son Darius on the uh, telephone, and uh, little DJ was on there. And so little DJ was on there, and, and I asked him about little DJ eating the cake, because what they do now is they give the one-year-old a whole cake, they put it on the floor, and the one-year-old can go dive in that cake. We'd have had problems when we were growing up. One girl would get the whole cake and we, we, we wanted a slice. Or we would uh, somehow slipped in there. But anyway, I was asking him about that. Then the baby's like, he said, no, he doesn't like wet things or whatever. Touch wet things or moisture things. I said, I ain't never tried to figure out whether they like something or not. Our children were so greedy. Then the, thing is, <laughs> the thing is, I tried to get, make salads where they would eat salad because I just wanted something to eat that they didn't like. But boy, they even eat salad. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. So they know their children, and even the Marius know him. They, they just spend time. Roger know him, and and Ergenor, and they spend time with their children, and they actually think about what they like or don't like. And I'm thinking, man, that's something new to me. They are consistent in their attitudes and behavior. And so, again, talking to one of my sons, he said, uh, I said, son, how do you have, he said, well, I, I'm kind of like this. I really digress to see my progression on handling when the baby is really crying or not. I progress as to if he's dry. I progress as if he's full. Amen. I progress to all these steps. And I'm thinking, not me. <laughs> they really study the kids, you know. They haven't been at certain times. And it's a time zone. My God, this is a new day. Yes. Amen. And these are black men. Yes. Amen. Black men. Mm -hmm. Son, Roger, 
country, wherever he goes, he has an arm in the hat. <laughs> Three children is an arm in the hat. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just something else. And then they love their children's mother. You know, if you're a father, one of the things that you have to do is really love your children's mother. Amen. 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 Now, let, let me clarify. I need to clarify. You love the children's mother that you're married to, okay? <laughs> you can still love the ones that you're not married to. That's right. But it's a different love. Okay? Right. Amen. Amen. And so the thing is <laughs> that the one you're married to has first priority, first prerogative. And you know what? If you are real at what I'm talking about, when you're talking about dealing with fatherhood properly, That's right. there needs to be where the wife is not always bypassed. That's right. Amen. And those things. And they use the term baby mama drama. But I don't believe it's always baby mama yeah. drama. Mm -hmm. I believe sometimes Papa not doing what he's supposed to Amen. do. Amen. Amen. So understand me when I say that. So, mm -hmm. you know, love your children, mother. We are required to love everybody. But the thing is, you know, that when it comes to that mom, and, and some things I've told myself, don't, never, don't you ever lay hands on your wife. Don't you ever put your hands on That's her. right. Amen. I don't care what. This with her. Uh, you know, she made the well anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> they're active <laughs> listeners to their children. They're active listeners to their children. And they spiritually equip their children. So, then a father is a helper. He's a helper to his wife and his children. Encouragement. He is caring. One of the best ways to encourage your uh, children is by letting them know that you care. We care when they fall down and when they get hurt. We care when they've had a bad day at school or at work. We care when their friends have hurt their feelings. We care when their special plans didn't turn out the, the way they had planned. As fathers, other than God, we should be the best friend a child has. I don't know if that's necessarily true. I just believe that uh, really it depends on uh, which one uh, is acclimated as far as father and mother because it may be the mother that's the best friend. It may be the father that's the best friend. But it really should be even. You know, it should, should be both of them. But most cases it's not. And so we just need to know that, you know, parents need to be the best friend and fathers, you need to always, always be available for your children no matter what. Amen? Amen. Amen. The next thing, he is forgiving. Uh, again, another way to encourage our child is by showing them that we can forgive. Sometimes parents can be too hard on their children. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've had to personally go to my children, each and every one of them, and ask them to forgive me for things I did. Mm -hmm. And even while I was saved and a man of God, I did that was undeserved. Now, I said I wasn't going, you know, I'd be trying not to do stuff because, I, like I said, I want to be a hero all the time. I want to look good in front of you. Most of us do want to look. But this is the apology that I wrote, and it's just one line, and it's to each of my children. And I've, I've apologized to each one of them, you know, just individually. But even the apology to David Jr., not sitting down with him and allowing him to express what was going on inside of him throughout his life, I apologize. To Erica, allowing her to leave and not fighting for her to come back anytime she desired, I apologize for that. For Roger, one of the most respectful sons that I have, not spending time that I should have. For Darius, for being your greatest competition rather than your greatest support. For the martyrs, not keeping up with you and being there for you during your late 10 years, I apologize. Oh, I think Can I cry? fathers, 
I think fathers need to apologize. I, I, I think it's more on us apologizing than us asking forgiveness of our children. Because we know when we weren't there. We know when it was done. I don't remember reading Destiny. And then go. Yeah. Yeah. To destiny for the injustice I caused you. And that's probably why she's a lawyer right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Amen>. Thank you, <laughs> Lord. Because our children need to hear an apology from us for our shortcomings. Amen. They need to hear that we're not so big and bad that our authority supersedes our love for them. Amen. And I'd like to apologize to all the children out there whose father has somehow disappointed them. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to ask you to forgive them Amen. through me. I apologize for it. You are valuable. You are anointed. And you are courageous to still be standing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Him. 
Mm. Dad, you only given one shot at life. Make the best of it. Build a life, life that counts for God. Stay away from sin. I mentioned sin. They said you can't mention them, but I mentioned. Be faithful in serving the Lord. Do all you can to keep your reputation spotless. One day, you will be glad you did. 2 Peter 3 and 14, we read, Wherefore, well, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent, that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Feel his courage. Fathers ought to have courage to be different. Do you remember what Joshua said in Joshua 24 and 12? He says, Choose this day whom you will serve. Then he said, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. When that will that be true of all fathers? If you're going to build a living legacy, you have to determine, me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. I don't care what other folk do. I don't care what other families do. If they have something on my house, they know they can't drink. They know they can't smoke. They know they can't cuss. They know that they can't do those things. But this is my house. Amen. Amen. And you have to determine in your house. Because anything you let in your house. It's going to take over your house. Yes, sir. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's going to take over. So we got to know how to do those things. Spiritual fathers are fathers who have a reputation for courage. And let me explain. We've always said courage is uh, going on in spite of fear. But in the Spanish, it's courage uh, means heart. It's about the heart. And, and so when we're talking about the heart is the reason people have courage. Because that's why... A five foot eleven uh, a woman can stand up against a bear if it comes to her children, Amen. because it's a heart thing. Yes. And if there's no heart there, then you can't have really have courage because you have to be convicted in your heart yes, that this is worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. And I want you to be convinced in your heart right yes, now Lord. that this, your relationship yes. with God, yes. that fatherhood is worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. So when we look at all of these things and we think of uh, the courage point, um, how do you spell father? F is for faith, A is for adversity, T is for teacher, H is for helper, E is for encouragement, and R is for reputation. I feel like I got something out of line. In closing, I want to explain, since we're talking about building a legacy of fatherhood, I want to explain to you about the dash in between. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. On the tombstone that we have, the marker for your death, there are two dates. There's the date you came into the earth and the date you left. And when it comes to the date you began in the earth, people rejoiced because you were living in vain. When you came in, out and left out of the world, they cried because they miss you. In most cases, they cried. <laughs> yeah, in most cases. But really, when it comes to the dash in between, which people look at, the dash in between represents your life that you live. When people look at that dash, they will to determine whether you were good, whether you're bad. And the thing about a dash, when you have something and then you have a dash, that means something is going to continue. Mm. When we're talking about leaving a legacy, if you're a true father, you'll leave a legacy of fatherhood, which means that you will leave children that love Christ. You will leave a wife that loves the Lord. You will leave children that you didn't even birth. And you will leave them wanting to know Christ more. Mm. You will leave a legacy of people that didn't even know you but met you. That you were a person that really loved God. And let me tell you. Whatever you are, it's going to come out. If you have a person of prayer, guess what's going to happen? People are going to remember you as a prayer warrior. If you were a person of the word, they're going to remember you as that. If you were a hellion, 
They're going to remember you as that. Amen. If you were one that was apathetic and didn't really show any emotion toward God, they will remember that. If you were one of these pimping preachers, <laughs> they're going to know you as that. Wow. But the thing is that we, as fathers of God, we decree it over every father here, every man here, that we are going to be relevant in this season. Yes. That the men of God in yes. this house are rising yes. up to another yes. anointing and authority. Amen. That your greatest you is yet to come. That your households are right now lining up. And even those that are viewing, I'm speaking to your husband. Yes, I'm speaking Lord. to the men that are watching. And I decree mm. that you are rising up. And for everything the enemy told you was dead, I speak life to it now. Yes, Lord. And we yes, right Lord. now lose yes, a legacy you. right yes. now. Amen. We are going to leave legacy of children that will be raised up and be fighters and warriors for God. Our men will not be lazy and these boys growing up. They will be men and fighters and they will glorify God. And we lose that mantle over our children in general. That as fathers, we are going to leave that dash where no one can doubt that Jesus Christ was his Lord of all. Lastly, I'd like to ask you, if you're out there and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and maybe you've been that father who said, I'm on the outside and there's no use of me trying anything or doing anything. Let me tell you what, God can save you. He can heal you. He can make you free. You know, there are some things that have happened in my life, and there's no way I could have gotten out of it without God. Flunking twice in elementary school, I like to repeat that one because people go, oh, he must have been dumb. No, just fighting for my life. Every day, fight. You understand? Alcohol, drugs, all those things, mean and low down as I could be. But boy, when Jesus Christ came into my life. Oh, amen. He came into my life for real. I didn't even know how to be a father because I didn't have a father. Didn't know any of those things. Oh, I did have a stepfather that told me every day of my life that I was no good and I would never amount to anything. But God, I want to let you know that there's a but God in your life. Amen. Amen. That God can turn around everything if you would allow him into your life. I ask you to repeat a, a prayer of salvation. If you just like to become a child of God and experience the power of God for real, just repeat after me our prayer of salvation. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus. I, ask you I ask you to forgive me of every sin I've committed against you, to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life from this moment on throughout eternity. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me in Jesus' name. We're so glad you joined us. If you want to contribute, uh, we have our cash app. You can do that. And it's Faye How B, dollar sign Faye How B Ham. Uh, we would love for you to contribute. And we just counted the blessings.